Next up on the list of most commonly asked legal questions is libel. It is a topic that many journalists, whether they are student or commercial journalists, find complicated. While the law can get complicated for lawyers and judges trying to sort out the details after a libel lawsuit is filed, the basic idea of libel, which is enough for journalists to protect themselves from most lawsuits, is fairly straightforward. So what is libel? Here is the definition. Libel is the publication of false statement of fact that seriously harms someone's reputation. An example, if you publish a story that says, Principal Jones stole a school bus and used it for a family vacation this summer, you'd better be right. If you're wrong, you have probably seriously harmed or libeled Principal Jones's reputation. Not too hard to understand, right? But we need to dig a bit deeper. Within this one line definition are five things that the person suing, in this example Principal Jones, must show before he can successfully sue for libel, and the Supreme Court added one more. Let's take a quick look at each of them. The first thing the person suing must show is that the libelous statement has been published. That's usually pretty straightforward. It is important to understand, however, that a published statement can occur almost anywhere. News articles are common sources of libel, but libelous statements can also appear in headlines, photo captions, restaurant reviews, and cartoons. It's also important to note that, at least in a print-based publication, you can be held responsible for republishing libelous statements made by others. Letters to the editor, senior wills and yearbooks, or ads created and submitted by others that contain serious, or false, serious and false claims can all be sources of libel lawsuits. In addition to showing that the statement was published, a person suing must also show that he or she has been individually identified. In many cases, this is also pretty easy to determine. If a person is named, he or she will almost certainly meet the identification requirement. In other cases, however, it may not be so simple. For example, even if, even if a person isn't named, he or she might be identified by other details included in the story. In our bus example, for instance, a story that says, the top official at Central High School is being investigated for stealing a school bus, still pretty clearly identifies the principal. On the other hand, the much more vague statement, school district officials are investigating a claim that a district employee stole a school bus, would probably not identify Principal Jones. While publications can successfully use pseudonyms or disguised identities to avoid a li libel claim, they must use extra caution. The bottom line, however, if there is no identification, a person cannot successfully sue for libel, even if he or she believes that they are the one being targeted by a false accusation. Back to the third part of the definition of libel, and it's very clear. Only false statements of fact can be libelous. There aren't too many black and white rules in the law, but this is one of them. Truth is an absolute defense to a charge of libel. Ah, uh, but it can never be that simple, right? Even though you might know that Principal Jones took a bus without permission and used it for a family vacation, do you have sufficient, reliable evidence? For example, verifiable documents, police reports, photographs, trustworthy, unbiased witnesses, etc. to back your claim if Principal Jones denies it? If you don't, you may not be able to rely on the truth to get you out of a libel jam. On the other hand, if you know something is true, and you can prove it, you can never be successfully sued for libel no matter how much it might damage a person's reputation or how angry they might be. As the saying goes, a person is entitled to no greater reputation than they have earned. Next, the person suing must show that the libelous statement is an assertion of fact, not opinion. If a statement contains only opinion, it cannot be libelous. Unfortunately, it is sometimes difficult to tell one from the other. In our example involving Principal Jones, it is easy to tell that the statement is an assertion of fact. For one thing, facts are, are objective. They are either true or false. Either he unlawfully took the bus or he didn't. If, instead, you had simply said, Principal Jones is awful, the statement, which can't really be proven true or false, would be pure opinion and protected in a libel lawsuit. 
Some statements can contain both opinion and fact. For example, I think Principal Jones is awful because he misused school property this summer is a mixed statement that might support a libel claim. And be careful. Simply publishing a story on the editorial page or labeling it as, as an opinion will not protect you from a libel claim if it contains untrue factual assertions. Next up, in order to successfully sue for libel, the person suing must also show that the false statement about them caused serious harm to their reputation. Being, being mildly offended or embarrassed is not enough. Some statements about a person, if false, will almost always be sufficiently harmful to a person's reputation to support a libel claim. For example, if you publish a statement that accuses a person of having committed a crime, such as stealing a school bus, your facts must be accurate because such, such accusations will almost always seriously harm a person's reputation. In the same way, accusing a person of sexual misconduct, lying, professional misconduct, or incompetence, bigotry, or having serious money problems are a few other categories that should always raise a red flag. Journalists can and should cover these topics, but should also do everything they can to ensure the information is reported fairly and accurately. Once it's shown that a statement, one, has been published, two, identifies a specific individual, three, is false, four, asserts a fact, and five, causes harm to a reputation, the person claiming libel must still show one more thing when suing in an American court. The Supreme Court has said that in order to successfully sue for libel, the First Amendment requires that the person suing must also show, at a minimum, that a journalist messed up, that he or she was somehow at fault. In other words, before you can be successfully sued, you must have done something a reasonable reporter or editor would not have done or failed to do something a reasonable reporter or editor should have done. This means that if you always do what a reasonable reporter should do and don't do what a re reasonable reporter wouldn't do, you will never be successfully sued for libel. So what does a reasonable reporter or editor do? None of these suggestions should be surprising. Use good sources, take accurate notes, obtain documentation, be fair, open-minded, and report all sides. The law is not kind to lazy reporters. A golden rule of journalism, and one that will generally keep you out of legal hot water, is to report only what you know and explain to your readers how you know it.